discussion surrounding weapons in any first person shooter, but Battlefield particularly often revolves around which is the best or what weapon should you be using in this particular situation at this particular distance or in this specific game mode. While this is all good and well, frankly, just as interesting are the weapons that don't qualify for the top 5 most effective weapons list, but instead are for some reason or another unique and very often criminally underrated. And precisely that is what we're going to be focusing on in today's video. Most of these weapons will be familiar to most of you regular players out there, but frankly, a lot of the finer details of what makes them unique or how they compare to competing weapons in the same class likely won't be. It just so happens that many of these weapons are actually extremely good, there's just often a twist that makes them difficult to master. But starting off with the Assault class, with a weapon most of you would have guessed was to make the list, the Breda PG. Currently the only burst fire automatic in the game, which makes it interesting in its own right of course for that very reason. Its average maximum fire rate is by default 423 rounds per minute, however the individual 4 round burst is actually capable of killing an enemy up to 30 meters away thanks to its extended 4 bullet to kill range that fires of course at a much higher 539 rounds per minute. If that isn't enough firepower, depending on your specialization choice, you will end up with a weapon that either eliminates these small gaps in between the individual bursts, bringing up the average rate of fire of the weapon to 539 rounds per minute, which is of course the very fire rate of the burst itself, and thus if fired correctly it essentially then behaves like a fully automatic weapon. Or, alternatively, you can choose to have an even faster burst in itself that fires at 635 rounds per minute, but the gaps between the bursts actually remain the same, leaving you with an average fire rate of 464 rounds per minute, only slightly higher than the default 423. The first of these options is better suited for sustained firing, while the other of course is specifically dedicated to downing targets with a single burst. This all makes for very interesting playstyles, independent of which of these two you pick, and of course a real challenge, especially if you go for that one burst, one kill specialization tree. But that isn't where the fun or the uniqueness of this weapon ends. Much like many of the lower RPM ARs, it is excellent in a semi-automatic firing mode. The Breda, however, is hands down the best semi-auto that isn't officially a semi-auto, as its damage model levels after it's increased to a 5 bullet to kill after 30 meters and doesn't continue to rise like other ARs. Therefore, you have a semi-auto mode that is roughly competitive with the likes of the M1A1 in terms of damage output. This paired with one of the fastest killing weapons between 10 and 30 meters if you hit your shots means you have a hell of a flexible package that is justifiably one of the hardest weapons to use in the game. Now, few weapons are more underrated than the Breda, but nevertheless interesting is the M2 Carbine. Now it is unique and it is decently popular, but honestly not really for the right reasons. It's the only AR other than the Breda to have a non-standard damage model, which otherwise is of course shared between the SCG-44, Sturmgewehr 15, Riberol and M1907SF. Essentially, it needs an additional bullet to kill at any distance over those weapons, but comes paired with of course reasonable recoil and an extremely high fire rate, which may lead you to believe that it's a close quarter focused weapon, but while it doesn't perform necessarily poorly there, really the thing is more or less a straight up upgrade over the STG-44 as it performs as good if not better than it at all relevant engagement distances. You may be confused as to the why of that, and the simple answer is math. The higher rate of fire comfortably compensates for the higher bullet to kill. In addition to that, the M2 is actually one of the few weapons in the game to have a horizontal recoil bias, which means it generally pulls more to the right than to the left, which will allow an experienced player to compensate for some, but by no means all, of the otherwise uncontrollable horizontal recoil. So definitely unique and probably a often misunderstood weapon. But on to the medic, for with the M3 grease gun, this class kind of has a mini pocket cannon that absolutely shreds people in the right hands. Now, at 450 rounds per minute, you would be forgiven for writing this weapon off despite it sporting a 3 shot kill in close quarters. But that nets this weapon similar performance to a Thompson in sub 20 meter engagements, which is already pretty damn good. 
where things of course get far more interesting is with headshots as mixing in just one of those will end up giving you a two shot kill and time to kill basically unrivaled by any of the competition unless of course they are hitting multiple headshots against their enemy. Further making the weapon unique and in my opinion underrated is the availability of a suppressor. Now this doesn't just decrease the amount of noise your weapon makes when firing, it also changes the hit markers your enemies receive. Instead of an indication that they have taken damage and from what direction that damage came, with a suppressor equipped weapon they won't get that directional information, leaving them largely clueless as to where they've been shot from. Thus for close quarter orientated flanks or generally more sneaky playstyles, this is an absolutely amazing weapon to use and a frustrating one to play against. Now, what would a video on the most underrated and unique weapons of Battlefield 5 be? Of course, without a mention of one of the most unique categories of weapon in the game, the bolt action carbines. Now, honestly, all three, the Commando Carbine, once more equipped with a functional suppressor much like the M3 Grease Gun, the M28 Con Trombacino, and of course the Jungle Carbine, which rivals bolt actions for more aggressive sniping, are truly unique. And they're all, maybe with the exception of the Jungle Carbine, to a certain extent underrated. They distinguish themselves, of course, from the Scout's bolt action rifles, not only in their more close quarter focused damage models, but also the ability to rechamber the gun without having to unscope. But with the mechanics of the suppressor already explained and the jungle carbine largely being a more aggressive variant of the Lienfield and thus not necessarily unique and certainly quite popular and not underrated, we're left with the M28 Contrombacino, which is what we're going to focus on here. It with its sub 50 meter one shot headshot truly forces you to play an entirely different game even if you're a seasoned aggressive sniper. Sure it's not quite as impossible to do well with as the commando carbine but nevertheless it's a challenge. It also, further making it unique, is the only medic weapon which has the opportunity to equip anti-tank gadgets. By default the M28 comes with an attached grenade launcher that with the right specializations can even be retooled to be specifically more effective against vehicles. Either way the gun is an absolute joy to use but much like the Breda and other skill cannons can take some time to get the hang of without a doubt. Now, if you were worried the support class wasn't going to be featured here, I'm happy to say your fears were misplaced. For while the class has some of the most boring and truly not underrated weapons in the game in my personal opinion, <clears throat> MMGs, it also has some true gems hidden away. Chief amongst them undoubtedly, and this is not a surprise, is one of the most satisfying to use weapons in the game, the M30 Drilling. Not only featuring a double barrel design, truly unique, allowing two shots to be fired very quickly in a row, alongside the largest one hit kill range of all the shotguns, this thing also comes with an alternative firing mode that shoots rifle bullets out of a separate barrel entirely, allowing you to go from wrecking medics in close quarter to counter sniping scout players across the map within seconds of each other. Getting a one shot headshot as if you were using a bolt action rifle is by far one of the most satisfying things you can do with any weapons and especially if you're using a shotgun while doing it. Honestly in terms of raw satisfaction few weapons even come close but the flexibility that this setup offers is also not to be overlooked. Few weapons offer this kind of range potential though of course it all comes at a cost and while you have a meager two shots in your close quarter armed shotgun when firing rifle bullets you only have one bullet before you have to reload and thus you're not going to be downing entire enemy teams at once anytime soon. But alongside the M30 drilling there's also the Matson MG unapologetically equipped with one of the most obtrusive and ridiculous magazines ever featured in a video game that comfortably takes up a third of your screen real estate. This disadvantage or rather discomfort does however come with certain advantages, namely a flat out better damage model than any of the other LMGs. Instead of going from a 4 shot sub 10 meters to a 5 shot between 10 and 30 meters, a 6 shot between 30 and 50 meters and a relatively poor 7 shot from 50 meters onwards, this weapon starts off with a 5 shot kill, performs that between 0 and 50 meters and afterwards simply requires 6 shots at any further ranges to down a target. Essentially you have a 1 bullet to kill advantage over all other fully automatic weapons from 30 meters onwards. What this means is, well, if you like using medium to long range focused automatics, specifically of course LMGs, you probably at the moment if you're not using the Matson, aren't using the best one. This weapon essentially matches or outright out damages likes of the Bren for example at any range but sub 10 meters where well none of these weapons really perform exceptionally well. 
The bar has something similar to offer in this regard. Though traditionally equipped with a normal damage model and a pretty great 720 round per minute fire rate for decent close quarter performance, if switched into its alternative firing mode, it will essentially use the Matson's damage model, but instead of firing at, of course, 720 rounds per minute, it will only be spitting out bullets at a rate of 550 rounds per minute. This means if it weren't for higher amounts of vertical and of course horizontal recoil, the bar would out damage even the Matson at longer ranges. So the bar essentially has a sub 30 meters high rate of fire mode and a post 30 meters lower fire rate mode for better damage and better performance. Something that far too few people have been actively using and even I only recently discovered how effective that really is. It allows you essentially to have a fully automatic weapon with a viable engagement distance far beyond anything any of the other fully automatic weapons can offer, maybe with the exception of something like the Breda PG that we previously of course talked about. So last but certainly not least then, we have the Scout class which, for better or worse, already by default has the largest variety of different weapon classes in the game. The anti-material rifles, who we shall not be mentioning further here today, the classic bolt actions, the self-loading rifles and the pistol carbines. The later two of the four categories we're going to be talking about in a little more detail. Now, you may think I'm going to tell you about the ZH-29, which is extremely popular and frankly for good reason. It's an insanely good weapon that, well, is competitive against almost anything in the game but for maybe SMGs and shotguns in close quarters. But no, while it and the Zebslader 1906 are standout weapons that are truly very powerful, they aren't necessarily really unique and definitely not underrated. The Autoloading 8, on the other hand, is both of those two. It may not have a suppressor or built-in grenade launcher, but it does have the fastest mid-range time to kill in the entire game. What makes it unique is how impossibly difficult it is to get that performance out of the weapon. If a 5 round mag wasn't already enough of a challenge, the reload that makes you watch your soldier slowly load each individual bullet certainly is. Not only in patience, but also in not getting killed while doing so. If you ever wanted the ultimate 1v1 weapon in Battlefield 5, frankly, this would be it. Because try to take on two players at once and miss more than just one shot and you're guaranteed an express ticket straight back to the spawn screen. It definitely rivals the Breda PG and M28 Contron Bacino for the ultimate skill cannon place and is by far one of the most difficult weapons to use. But if you get it right, it is strictly speaking one of the best weapons in the game and of course used by hardly anyone and thus criminally underrated. But last, and possibly actually least in this case, we have the Trench Carbine. This thing may not be the most competitive weapon out there, and it certainly isn't the most popular either, but it's the only fully automatic weapon available to the Scout class, which makes it at least unique. The question of course remains if it is truly underrated. Now, to get the weapon into full auto mode, you will need the select fire trigger specialization and you will still only be getting a fire rate of 360 rounds per minute, which despite its three bullet to kill sub 10 meters, still isn't exactly amazing, especially if you compare it to the M3 grease gun that fires at 450 round per minute. But you do have a massive magazine and frankly, you can still do well with the weapon. It's best just to see it as somewhat of a challenge and make sure you're making good use of the powerful recon gadgets you have as Otherwise, you likely would be better off simply using an SMG or an AR. But that pretty much wraps it up for the underrated and unique weapons in Battlefield 5. Have a favorite, share it down below, enjoy the video, rating would be much appreciated. But with all that being said, I'd like to thank you very much for watching and hope to see you in the next Battlefield 5 video.